so it's finally time for a pond aeration video. I want to do a quick video on this setup. I purchased this last summer and I kind of held off setting it up because I wanted to have most of the heavy equipment work done around the pond and we're at that point now where it's 90% complete so shouldn't get any damage to this unit that's when, once we set it up. Uh, it's a really simple setup. I went with solar powered. Did a little bit of research. There's a lot out there. Um, this is a solar powered unit. So the panel's right here. It's upside down right now and not running. Um, simple little diffuser that goes to the bottom of the pond. It's a whole bunch of little holes in here so it's going to send off you know thousands of little bubbles up to the top of the surface. So it's really simple. Three pieces here. So we'll take a look at the solar panel. This is the real brains of the unit. I'll take it out of the box. It's going to turn on. You're going to hear the pumps turn on once they see some light. There they go. So the two pumps are right here. Really nice and simple because they're on the back side of the solar panel. The panel feeds the pumps and then the air compressor line hooks in here and just goes to the diffuser. Like it's super simple. Uh, not a lot can go wrong with this system. All of your sort of brains of the setup is right here. Easy to get to, easy to see. I'm gonna flip this panel over and it's going to really pump air. This, this thing really puts out a lot of air. So you can hear those going as the sun's fully on the panel. In the other box we have the rubber diffuser. On the back side you can clearly see he's made this from scratch. It's a home gym two and a half pound weight to hold the thing down and some galvanized fittings here on the side. This is ready to take the threaded end of the air hose. The air hose is simply a 3 8 premium air hose from a basically an auto shop uh, it's just an air compressor air hose so it seems to work from the reviews I've seen it comes with some simple instructions like it, it's super easy to put together uh, it's my invoice I paid for this because I don't have enough subscribers hint hint um, so that's that's really all you get in the two boxes and it's ready to set up so we'll grab a couple tools we don't need much and uh, we'll put it together and see how much air this thing's going to push out so I do have some algae floating on top. Um, don't think that's a negative, it's just maybe not as pretty to look at as an algae free pond. Uh, the minnows love it, they're growing quickly. They're chewing on that. Um, you can see some small ones here. I can probably see down maybe a foot and a half, so I've got about 16 inches, super clear. You know, I'd like to get a little bit more clarity if I can. It'll be interesting to see, that's why I wanna take this shot now. We'll see the before, we'll run this pump for a week or two see if it makes any uh, any positive in the pond. So the purpose to aerate a pond, what I want to do is create some movement in this pond. I don't have a stream coming in, I don't have a creek coming in, I don't have anything coming in. And when I say get some movement going, that's, that's sort of the key here. This air stone or diffusers going to go to the bottom of the pond. I'm going to try to get it in my deepest point, which is only maybe seven feet. This panel is going to pump some air into this diffuser it's going to release it at the bottom and those air bubbles are going to go up. They're going to go up and they're going to hit the surface and they're going to run to the outside edge of the surface. What that's going to do is create some current in there as it lifts up from the bottom, pushes out to the side. So I want to kind of have that vertical current going with this diffuser. It's going to move oxygen all over the pond. It's going to, one thing it's going to do is bring that cold water up and mix it with the warm water. So during the day, it will alter my temperature. I won't have that cold bottom that some fish like. I just have bass in here, so I'm sure it's going to be fine. I bought this last year thinking I may need this because I won't be able to keep fishing here, but we've gone two summers and two winters now with some fish in here. I've never lost any. I think I have a pretty good pond, actually, some, some, some good oxygen in there. I'm just kind of being picky. You know, you kind of like the clear pond you want to see down three feet but with that comes some negatives too like extra plant growth um, you know not a great setting for the fish so then diffuser airline on to here okay that's never coming off so that's all hooked up that was uh, less than five minutes tighten those bolts up and fire your diffuser into the pond so this is a little trickier, you want to get this where it's in the right place and face up, obviously. Uh, so I'll, we'll take it down the pond, test it out just to see what it does in this light. And then I just have to drag this out. I'm going to try with uh, a rope or two ropes, 
try to drag this into the middle of the pond and release it. If not, I'll be going for a swim. Welcome to the pond. So I have the diffuser in, just flipped upside down. It's only in like three or four inches of water, but it'll be enough for us to check out how much air this thing's going to pump. So this is the two pump panel. And as soon as this sees some sunlight, it's going to fire up. There it goes. There's full. It's at about the direct angle of the sun. And that's pretty good. Quite a bit of air coming out of that. It's super easy. There's like no electricity, very few moving parts. Not a lot can go wrong with this. I like that. It's quiet. It gets no sun, it shuts off. So back a day after we got the we got the bubbler in, it was a bit of a guessing game with the rope. I wasn't sure how to do it. Just jump in, take it down. I think I'm in the deep spot there. Um, if this water clears up, we'll be able to see more, but got the ropes on it and just kind of pulled it in place and then let go of one side and pulled it around. Nobody got wet, uh, not too much yelling at each other, so that was good. Creating a lot of bubble, a lot of air in there. Uh, you can kind of see the algaes floating around. It's definitely not done anything yet. Um, and from what I've read, you can definitely create an algae bloom. Your water can get worse before it gets better, which is normal. Um, what we're doing is we're putting a lot of air in. We're moving the nutrients all around the pond. We're bringing some of that uh, nutrient-rich water from the bottom, getting it up in the sun. So you can actually create an algae bloom uh, in the short term on your pond. Don't panic if it gets really bad before it gets better. So. Right now we're about the same, definitely green. I'm going to take my, uh, my high-end underwater camera and I'm gonna take some video just around the perimeter, see if I can catch some minnows, some fish on camera to see sort of how far we can see. Like looking down, I can see a foot, 12 inches, maybe 16. You know, you can see, see them shape a fish, but it's certainly not clear. But I wanna have some early on video and then we'll compare, you know, maybe a week from now and a couple weeks from now. I'll probably do a second video on a follow-up. Follow um, but I just want to get a base point on what we started with. I have to get a two-inch post. I don't have it, so I just, uh, I'm laying the panel down on the dirt right now. And uh, it's, you can see the bubbler going there. Uh, it's been working really well and it's been a cloudy day. There's quite a bit of cloud up there. And it still doesn't stop all day, so quite happy with that. Picked up this aluminum post. I'm gonna get it dug into the ground here. This isn't gonna be like permanent, but I just wanna get the panel off the ground. Uh, it runs great on the ground, but uh, I just don't wanna get it damaged. Um, so I'll get this maybe sunk in here on this angle. We've got south facing, so this side of the pond is perfect for a solar panel. Uh, it's pretty good. Maybe like Morning sun, evening sun. Okay, now for the angle. Dead south. Out there. We'll try like that. All right, it's time for an update on the pond aerator. Uh, I've been waiting a long time to do this. As you can see, the pond is brown. Uh, it's been a frustrating year. Uh, heavy, heavy rains. I've been fighting erosion. You can see there's just, it's the lowest point. All the water's coming in here. We got sand everywhere. I got no grass around this pond. It's been super frustrating. There's been three or four heavy, heavy rains that have just poured in here, like creek here, creeks over there. And that silty sand that I have here, it never settles. It takes forever. Um, so I haven't been able to do a great pond aerator update. I thought we'd have, you know, beautiful, clear, clear water, I could do some underwater camera work like I did. You know, it's cool seeing the fish and the minnows under there. I, I can't see anything. It's been like this for two months. Uh, that, that aerator's been going probably two and a half months, I'd say 10 weeks. Um, what I will say is, I don't think I did a video, but after about 10 days to two weeks, the floating algae, that string algae that I had, it actually disappeared. Um, I was always a little bit on the fence whether this, this bubbler, this aerator would would actually work, um, but I have to say it got rid of that floating algae fairly quick, within two weeks. Um, but then we got the storms and the rain and the water turned brown. So I couldn't really, I couldn't really tell you how great it is yet because I've never had the clear water. The reason I'm doing the update right now is I kind of realized that this aerator is probably causing 
the silty sand not to settle. It just seemed like a really bad year with all the rain, but usually after a week or 10 days, it, it would kind of settle in. All that air is pulling the water from the bottom of the pond and bringing it up. So it's continuing to do this as it comes up from the bottom and out. I'm sure that that's why this is staying cloudier longer. So I'm actually going to unplug this thing so that's the nice thing with this setup. No tools really required other than the wrench just to loosen the bolts, to adjust the tilt, but uh, it's on and off real quick in two seconds. So once it sees sun, it's fired. And when it doesn't have any sun, it's shut down. So I'm hoping now in, I'm gonna check in a couple days, I should be able to see this thing start to settle. That's the plan anyway, unless it's something else. So it's been two weeks with the pond aerator turned off and the water has not settled. I was completely wrong. It wasn't the movement from the aeration. Uh, it sat here stagnant for two weeks and it's definitely still green, embarrassingly green. So I got a plea for help here to figure this out. Um, it has to be from that runoff. We've hit runoff maybe three or four times this year. Organic matter going in, not breaking down. I'm not sure, totally stumped. I thought it would settle and drop, but I definitely have some kind of algae going on here. The, there's no string algae, there's no thickness to the water. It's very thin and, and clear-ish, but just has that green tint. So I'm gonna take a water sample here in, in a glass container so that we can kind of see what's going on here. And hopefully somebody knows what's going on because I clearly don't. So there's the water, like it's got a tint to it. It's like a light green tint. No huge particles floating through it, like it's still I'd consider it like clear water, but definitely has that green tint to it. I don't know. Can't figure it out. So I'll pull the bag off of the solar panel. I had to bag it because it was still running in the cloudy days. There, it's going like that, not even facing the sun. So the nice thing with this system is it doesn't need a lot of light to run. And it'll really kick in when it hits that sun. There it goes. So I've got that panel set pretty low, trying to catch that low sun that we have up here in October. So we're making some bubbles again. Um, I'll let this thing run as long as we can here into freeze up. I'm hoping it miraculously clears it up. I don't know anymore. I'm really struggling this year. Uh, I'd like to get one of these projects to work out properly. Uh, the drain down there, way down by those rocks, that was the one that uh, I did earlier in the year and, and it couldn't keep up to the groundwater that was pouring in in the storm. So. That's what got us into this green water to begin with. So that was a failure. This beach over here is not done yet. The water's still high. That could be a failure. Uh, I got to hit one of these here uh, and, and win on one of them. So I'd love to see some clear pond water here this, this season before freeze up. Definitely have six to eight weeks probably before that happens. So I've dragged out the pond aeration video as long as I could, hoping and praying that the water would clear up, but it didn't. And now winter's shown up here, but it's frozen. We got a little bit of ice on the pond and I have to, uh, I have to take the aerator out because we want to skate on this pond in the winter and you can see a giant circle, which is a bunch of air now under the ice. I couldn't really get it to clear up with just the aerator. Um, I have since talked to pond people like professionals and uh, they just sort of laughed and said, yeah, you just need, you need to use some of that dye. And then they have like a little bit of a natural additive you can put into the pond and they're quite confident that we can get this cleared up next year to where it's like really nice clear water. I didn't really want to go with the dyes, it's kind of like fake, um, but this was a struggle this year so I think I'll probably turn to them in the spring, get my supplements ready and uh, still run the aerator with that. They said the aerator's sized properly for the pond, it's just there's so much uh, organic matter to break down there that the the aerators having trouble with that. The pumps are taking in lots of air and then sending it to the bottom of the pond and you can see it's just about to break through the center there it looks like uh, that's where the diffuser is. So all this white area is air. It's oxygen been sent down and it can't get out of the pond so it's lifting that ice up. Kind of cool to watch. I don't know how long it's going to take before it breaks through. It looks like it's really close in the center and then that will hopefully um, let all the air out and that ice can drop down and then it can properly freeze for the winter skating season. I think I can throw a rock through that. Left-handed here if I can hit that hole. Uh, oh, there it goes. There goes the oxygen. 
That's thick enough ice. I didn't think it was that thick. So the bubbles are out. I think that's going to work. Uh, now it's getting smaller. That's cool. So I just want to wrap this one up. It was a long video shot over weeks or months. <laughs> I was hoping for a magic bullet, clear water. We could turn on the camera at the end of the year and say, hey, we're perfect, but wasn't the case. We will disassemble this for the winter, put it inside. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next spring with a pond plan, some blue dye, and hopefully some clear water. So thanks for watching this. It was a bit of a struggle. I don't know if everything I did this year was a partial fail. So I think we'll just call it a to be continued project. Uh, it's a bit of a fail, but I think I can bail it out in the end uh, next spring. Clean up a few of these uh, projects like the beach over there. Um, not a not a great year, a tough year for sure, but um, I want to get this pond back to nice and clean water like we enjoyed for the first two seasons. So that will be the plan. We'll wait for this. Uh, hopefully this ice will burst here soon, pop through, let all that air out, and then I will uh, take the machine down and go for a skate this winter. Thanks for watching.